My dear brothers and sisters, this third Sunday of Easter, we see in the Gospel the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They are an example to us of perseverance. Perseverance is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You've heard of the gifts of the Spirit, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, counsel, courage, piety, fear of the Lord. You've also heard me speak of the charismatic gifts or the charisms, healing, prophecy, tongues, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, etc. But then we have in Galatians the fruits of the Holy Spirit, joy, peace, patience, perseverance, charity, chastity, and the like. Perseverance we could call stick to itness. Or as Mother Teresa of Calcutta, now St. Mother Teresa, would say, that God desires fidelity, not success. That we are called to get up again and again and to persevere. We see in the Gospel, first and foremost, these two disciples who were disillusioned. And yet, they're still being called disciples. They're still with the group of disciples. When Jesus went to his death on the cross, they could have said, that's it, we're out of here. But they were willing to go through something they didn't understand. They were willing to sit there and mull it over and debate it and figure out what is going on. They're walking to Emmaus, but we don't hear, ah, we used to be disciples. No, we hear their disappointment. We hear their struggle to understand what is happening. Not only does Jesus die, dashing their hopes, but then they hear this strange news that two of the women saw him, or saw angels saying that he was alive. If I were one of those disciples, I know I'd be confused. And we see, brothers and sisters, Perseverance, also known as long-suffering. The ability to go through things that we don't understand and that we don't get, but putting our trust not in ourselves, but in God. There was a man who had a radical conversion to Christ. And he heard, as Jesus says in the Gospel, that as a disciple, he's called to heal people. So he prayed for over 600 people. Zero people got healed. He didn't give up. His name is Todd. When he kept praying, he began to learn that if he wasn't seeing results, it must not be God's fault. He had to just keep praying and asking God. And eventually he had breakthrough where somebody got healed. And today he leads a ministry and teaches people how to do these very things. How to be open to the Holy Spirit and how to pray with people. Does everybody still get healed? No. But some do. But some do. You may remember back in January... When I was supposed to go on vacation to Portugal and to Spain, a friend of mine who didn't know that I was going, I didn't even know that I was going, had sent me a card and said, "Um, Blessings on your trip. Enjoy it. Many good things to come from it. And I texted that friend. I said, What are you talking about? What trip? I don't know what trip you're talking about. She replied, I don't know, God just says you're going on a trip and you're going to get really blessed by it. And then I texted some other friends of mine who I know sometimes hear from God, and they're like, yeah, uh, we don't know what's going on, but for some reason God's saying you're going on a trip and there's going to be many blessings to come from it. And one friend recommended that I just let it sit for a bit and let God show me what trip it was supposed to be. And I woke up one morning with Fatima and Santiago in my heart completely out of the blue. And so I made arrangements to go, got permission from my provincial. My provincial father, Robert, asked that Father Peter come back down 
you may recall, right? I'm not sure everybody heard the story, but this is what happened. The Monday before I was supposed to go, Father Peter was supposed to come. Tuesday I was supposed to leave to go down to New York so that Wednesday I could catch the flight from New York. That was the timeline. So, Monday afternoon, I get a call from Phyllis, and she says, Father Peter just called. You're not going to like the news. He got denied entry into the United States in Toronto. And I said, what? What is that about? So, I had to fight discouragement, because they knew it was trying to come in. It's like, All these things, not just all those friends who had told me, yeah, you're going on this trip and supposedly there's going to be all these blessings, but then God just kept confirming it. The crazier it seemed to me to go hike to Santiago de Compostela, I didn't know the way. God just kept making, like, giving me the answer as to, yeah, you can do this, and yes, you're supposed to do this, and even so much as having Father Ruminski down in New Hartford give me a backpack to use. He had all the equipment. So that evening, I just, I knew I had to fight. I had to persevere, not fight in a bad way. Fight to persevere. Because I was getting discouraged. And I said, God, you're the one who put this trip on my heart. I didn't have any idea about this. You're the one who told people I was going to get blessed by this trip. So you better work it out. Because there's only two ways about it. You said I was going to get blessed by people. People told me that. So either this trip is going to happen, you're going to make this work out, and I'm going to get blessed, or the trip is going to get canceled, and you're still going to bless me. Only two ways about it. So the next morning I wake up, still, I have no idea how I'm supposed to get coverage for the parish, right? And I said to God, look, you know, I've heard of you taking people It's kind of weird. I've heard of you taking people from one place to another, right? Just on on their own. Like the Deacon Philip, you've heard of that. I've also heard of God taking people, popping them over to a certain place, having them spend time there. They come back, and no time has, has 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 passed. It's called bilocation. We hear about it in the stories of the saints. It's beyond my experience, but I said, God, I've heard that you're able to do that. So because you're the one who said that this was going to happen, and you're the one who put this all together, if you have to pop me over to Portugal and then pop me back, then you do that. I said this, you just get me to Portugal and I can't worry about the rest of the trip. Two seconds later, I get a text message from Father Bruce. Literally, I'm like, somebody texts me, I'm like, that's weird. Of course, it's Father Bruce. He's up early. It was like 6.30. <laughs> he says, Chris, do you mind if I come to Winstead and stay over? It's going to be while you're away. Sorry that I'll miss you. So I text him back and I said, listen, I'm not sure I'm actually going because this is what happened. So he writes me back and says, well, listen, I've got plenty of priests to be able to take the coverage at St. Margaret and St. Mary in Buzzard's Bay. So... I'll extend my time away from here to cover you while you're away. My jaw dropped. And by the way, God took me at my word. Every bit of anxiety about the trip left me at that moment as I realized, you just worked things out, didn't you, God? But it could have been easy to give in to discouragement. It could have been easy to say, God, why did you let this happen? It could have been easy. So to persevere, it may be true that perseverance is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And that the Holy Spirit is the one who works that perseverance in us. But we do have a role to play in Preparing the groundwork, if you would. You know, just like a farmer prepares the soil in order to receive the seed, that the seed might grow properly, and then it gets fertilized, and then there's water, 
etc., right? Perseverance being a fruit of the Holy Spirit, God's the one who puts that seed in us by his grace. But we're then called to cultivate it. So whenever we face difficulties, there are a few things that we can do to help that process of perseverance, of long-suffering to grow in us. The first thing is the most important act of faith that we can sometimes say. So it's a very simple thing we can recognize. I don't know why. That's a very important act of faith, brothers and sisters. I don't know why. Because sometimes we short-circuit faith by trying to figure out why, to try to put a reason to why things didn't work out the way we thought, oh, it must be my fault, etc., etc., it must have been this, it must have been that. No. How about simply, I don't know why. Because along with that goes, I don't have all the answers. Why? Because I am not God. I do know God is good. He calls me to persevere. These simple things that we can do to prepare for perseverance. Another thing we can do is this. Just as Cleopas and the other disciple, we don't know if it was a man or a woman disciple, but Cleopas and this other disciple are willing to share their disappointment with God. We want to be willing to do that with God as well. To say to God, God, I don't know why X did not work out. Y did not work out. I don't know why person Z didn't get healed. I don't know why person A died. Or I don't know why ABC happened to me. I don't know. But I do know that you're good. And I'm asking you to give me an understanding just as you gave Cleopas and the other disciple. So that with renewed hope and renewed vision, I can continue to trust that you're good. And so this day, brothers and sisters, that's our prayer. As we meet Jesus in the Eucharist, we want to ask him to give us that grace of perseverance, but more so, even to answer some of those questions that have been rattling around in our hearts. Those areas that have caused us to say, I don't get it. I don't understand why. So that with Jesus ministering to that, we can persevere, we can stay steadfast, and not lose hope, but instead have our hope renewed, so that as Jesus speaks to us, our hearts may be burning like the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Amen.